Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is the new built-in Azure Key Vault connector for Azure Logic App Standard and I'm going to show you how you go ahead and use it with managed identity. Let's go. All right, so why is this episode important? So the Logic Apps team has been busy working hard on adding more and more built-in connectors into Logic App Standard. Now, one of the more popular asks has been a built-in connector for Azure Key Vault, and this connector is now available in preview. So I thought I would show you how you go about using this to get secrets and using managed identity. Uh, in this video, we'll also discuss secure inputs and secure outputs. And then lastly, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, if this connector came out, like are there other connectors that have recently come out or when will this particular connector come out in Logic App Standard? And we, there is an updated roadmap. Uh, I'll include the link in the video itself, but Divi has recently updated that post. So go ahead and check it out. And if there's something missing, you know, feel free to add a comment in that thread to get more feedback. All right, let's go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Key Vault. Now, what is Key Vault? So Key Vault is a centralized store, and generally you want to use it for storing secrets. So those could be like passwords or keys, if you have APIs and you need to pass along the key, or even certificates itself. Now, one of the, I guess, the benefits of, of Key Vault, but also a situation that people fall over, on is that these are generally time bound, which is a good thing. You don't want secrets that are last forever, that are available forever. So you can set boundaries or, or limits upon how long these keys are valid and, and do things like key rotations and things like that. Now, naturally, if you have a centralized store, and you can obviously provision more than one of these within an enterprise, but um, having too many of them probably doesn't help you either. But these secrets, these keys, these certificates, like these are often, you know, referred to as keys to the kingdom. And so as a result, you need to be able to protect your key vaults so that you don't have abuse and you don't have too much access that's being exposed. And so there's two different authentication modes uh, that you can use when connecting from Logic Apps over to Key Vault, and that's Azure Active Directory OAuth 2. And so that could be much like your username and password in terms of how you go ahead and connect. Now, that might work for some organizations. There's probably some valid use cases for that, but now you're dependent upon an account. So you have situations where, well, what happens if that account leaves or disappears because someone's left the organization? Or worse, you get into a shared account situation where people are sharing username and password uh, in order to access the secrets. So that's not a good idea either. And this is why I do like managed identity, where we can go ahead and specify specific resources that can go ahead and connect into Key Vault, and then I go ahead and sort of manipulate those keys. It could be read, it could be writes, could be modify. Now, naturally, like the rest of Azure, you use RBAC in order to control what people can do. So in the scenario that I'm gonna show you, you can go ahead and uh, use uh, like a reader role. And so our managed identity is only gonna have the ability to read keys, um, not be able to modify. And that's how you can kind of reduce your surface area. One other thing I would just call on is like restricting access is, is obviously pretty important. I'm not gonna show it in this video, I might show it in an upcoming video, but we could also connect this to say a VNet as well. And then we could make sure that all of our traffic is flowing through a VNet uh, just for sort of, I want to focus more so on the managed identity side of things. So that's the purpose of this video, but do want to call that out that putting kind of a bubble, for lack of a better term, around your key vaults, not a bad idea either. All right, so let's take uh, sort of step by step, what would we do in order to enable an Azure Logic app, in this case standard, uh, should be quite similar with consumption, but we want to focus on built in here. And we want to go ahead and connect to Key Vault using a managed identity. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our Logic App Standard instance. So you can see that here. Click on our Identity tab and then be able to turn on our identity, our managed identity. Now, there's two modes of managed identity. For the purposes of today, I'm going to use just system, um, but we also have user. Now, in terms of what's the difference, System assigned managed identities have their lifecycle tied to the resource that created them. 
user assigned managed identities can be used on multiple resources. So the way I like to look at this is kind of like a one to one mapping versus a one to many mapping. Now in, or I guess many to one. Uh, now in this case, what we're doing is we've got a managed identity for a specific system. If we go ahead and say delete this logic app standard instance, this principal ID will go with it versus user assigned where it's sort of decoupled from the resource itself. And so if you've trying to do this across many resources, user signed might be a better fit for you. Um, if you're just, because Logic App Standard is kind of like a container in itself, in the sense we can have many workflows that belong to our Logic App Standard instance, um, in many ways this might be okay for, for scenarios too. So just wanted to call that out, but you do wanna make sure that you turn on your managed identity, in this case for this demo we're using system. After that, we now need to then assign a role, like what can this managed identity access? We'd go ahead and click on the Azure Role Assignments button. When we do so, we're going to get transitioned over into this uh, Azure Role Assignments experience. Now, I've done some other things with managed identity, so just ignore these three line items. You shouldn't see them. But what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and add a role assignment. Now, what I've decided to do is I've gone ahead and uh, established my scope. So in this case, the scope is Key Vault. This managed identity is going to have a role assignment related to Key Vault for a specific subscription, for a specific resource, in this case, Key Vault. And then we need to specify a role. And so what I've done is I've selected Key Vault Secrets User. And as you can see here, this allows me to read secret contents only works for key vaults that use Azure role-based access control permission model. That's an important caveat. If you have an existing key vault, this may not be enabled for you. If you're creating net new, you would want to specify this is the type. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Uh, well, in the next slide, I'll, I'll talk about that. So after I've gone ahead and done that, if I'm in my key vault and I look at access control I am, I'm going to see that I now have a, another principle, in this case my managed identity for Logic App Standard, that has Key Vault Secrets users permission. And we can see that right here. So, uh, you know, you do want to make sure you've got a meaningful name when you go ahead and specify uh, that resource. But uh, here you go. This is, we know that it's actually set up. Now, back to, if we look at that role again, Key Vault Secrets user, we can see that it only works for key vaults that use the Azure role-based access control permission model. Now, how do I go about setting that up? So you would go about setting that up in your key vault, going down to access configuration, and then you're going to see these two options here. Now, this key vault is, is something that I've had for quite some time, probably at least a year, maybe two years, I've had this key vault. And so the vault access policy was selected for me. Um, I assume that that was just a, a previous sort of model and then we've got another model that we can use here. So here we're gonna go ahead and select the Azure role-based access control. Now, in terms of what is Azure role-based access control, uh, we can see here, I'll leave this link inside the description of the video, but Azure role-based access control is an authorization system built on top of ARM, Azure Resource Manager, that provides fine-grained access management. And then Azure RBAC allows users to manage key secrets and certificate permissions. It provides one place to manage all the permissions across key vaults. So this feels like the right mode that I should be using moving forward as it gives me more holistic management of my key secrets and certificates. So that's how you, you will want to be able to set that up in order for you to be able to access the key vault from Logic Apps. You won't necessarily see an error if you don't do this, but what's gonna happen is when you try to use your Logic App and create a connection, and after you've created a connection, you try to browse for a key vault, you're gonna find that you don't have access. And that's why you do wanna do these steps before you even touch Logic Apps. Okay, so switching gears, we're in the designer, and if we go to built-in, what we're gonna see is more connectors than probably what you've seen recently. And uh, as we talked about sort of earlier in the presentation, there's been a lot of work being done lately to increase our library for built-in connectors. And Azure Key Vault is one of those that shows up. 
And so if I go in here and I search for Azure Key Vault, I should be able to find it. Same thing, if you go to Azure itself, you'll be able to find Key Vault as well. But I think what kind of the core use case or, or I would call it requirement that I've heard a lot from is that people do generally wrap VNets around their Key Vault instance. They do want to access those secrets from that same VNet. And as a result, they'll want to use Azure Logic App Standard to use that VNet connectivity in order to access these secrets. So using the built-in probably makes more sense in most of the time uh, for you to go ahead and to retrieve secrets itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Key Vault as my connector. I'm then gonna go ahead and use the Get Secrets operation. Yes, these are in preview. Uh, these were just released probably within the last couple weeks. And so they are in preview at this point in time. All right, now that I've selected my connector and my operation, I'm gonna to need to go ahead and create a connection itself. This is where, from an authentication type perspective, you're gonna to wanna to click this drop down and select Manage Identity. The other option is that Azure Active Directory OAuth 2 that I mentioned before. And then what I need to do is provide a Vault URI. So if I go into my Key Vault and I click on Overview, I will see this Vault URI over there. I can go ahead and click the little copy icon, paste that into my Vault URI, and then click Create, and I will now have a valid connection to connect to Key Vault. Then from there, once I've gone ahead and done that, I should be able to click the drop down to see what secrets are available to me. This is that point I was trying to make before where if you haven't enabled the Azure RBAC mode for your Key Vault and you're trying to use managed identities and using that role that I had provided or specified, when I click this drop down, I'm not gonna find anything. So that's why that's an important step. And one other thing to note, if you're not familiar with secure input, secure outputs, you should be using this feature whenever you're using secrets. And the idea here is that you will not leak sensitive information into your logs, your run history logs. So when we go ahead and click on get secret and we go over to settings, I can turn on secure inputs and outputs so that my logs are obfuscated. Now in this case, uh, I didn't feel the name of the secret was overly sensitive, so I turned that off. But I did want the output, such as my secrets, my secret value, that is sensitive, so I did turn that on. And so what that means is I can use this value downstream in other actions, such as compose, or if I have an HTTP call or something like that, I can use it, but it just won't show up in my run history. And I'll show you that in the demo. So speaking of demo, let's jump over to demos and see this in action. All right, so I am in Logic Apps, I'm in the portal. I've got a very simple workflow here. I've got a recurrence. I'm just gonna go ahead and get a secret. In this case, I've got my secure inputs, outputs off. And then I'll show you sort of the difference once I turn it back on. And then here's just a compose and I'm gonna go ahead and display the secret name and the secret value itself. So let's go ahead and let's run this. Okay, so that's completed. Let's go ahead, let's take a look at our run history. Okay, here if we go ahead and take a look at our secrets, we can see the name of my secret, we can see my secret value. And so that's great, we know that it's working. If I go ahead and use my compose, we can go ahead and see that my output value is the name of my secret and the secret itself. So that's cool, it works. You now know my secret password to Excel. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's make a change because I may not want my operations folks to be able to go ahead and see those values. So we wanna restrict the access. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to enable secure outputs. Like I mentioned before, the inputs, in this case, all that gets passed in is the name of my secret. Maybe that's sensitive, maybe it's not. Let's just leave it off for now and let's hit done, save, and then let's go ahead and run it once again. Okay, so that's completed. Now, if we go over to our get secret action, we can see the output, current content not shown due to security configuration. Remember, we left secure inputs off, and for this specific input, so here, uh, we've got that passed in, which is cool, that's fine. Now, if we go ahead and look at our compose, 
We'll see that the value, like the, the fact that I had gone ahead and specified this specific output was secured, that even if we use it downstream, we don't inadvertently leak the credentials that way. So this is good that if we specify a specific value, it's kind of properties for secured outputs will basically go along with it. So we don't have to worry about it being leaked elsewhere. All right, so that concludes another episode on the channel. Uh, now that summer's over, I plan on posting more than I had. I had a good summer, which is uh, obviously good. So if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on YouTube right now. Likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon.